Hallelujah. Yo Jehovah. Amen.
Father, what a joy it is to know this one thing, that there is no other name apart from the name of Jesus, the name that is respected in heaven, on earth, under the earth, every mention of the name of Jesus, and every knee must bow down, and every tongue confess that Jesus our Lord. We thank you and we honor you in Jesus' mighty name. Say amen with me. Thank you so much, beautiful choir. May God bless you. God watch over you. And before you take your seat, please welcome somebody next to you. Say hi. How are you? Tell them your name. Yeah. Good. Row number one, two, and three, please. Row number one, two, and three. So that I can talk to you closely. Never sit row number four because we are we are not many today. I don't know why, because of elections or whatever. But occupy one, two, and three. Row number one, two, and three. One, two, and three. One, two, and three. One, two. And three. Even here, you can take row number one if there is space. It's good to see you, Samantha, all the way from Emakai. We are not so we're still in busy <laughs> Row number one, two, and three. If you tuck yourself in, this side of row number three is, is quite good. Yeah. All you beautiful musicians, row number three, that side is quite good. You can tuck yourself in. Row number one, two, and three, so that others can occupy all other rows. Say amen. Did you greet your neighbor and uh, introduce yourself to them? Mm -hmm. Do you like your neighbor? Do you like the person sitting next to you? Um, I'm saying, <laughs> if you don't like them, why? Mm. Hey. We want to, I want to join in the today's message before you hate it. I want to pick the Sunday message because it will flow in or dovetail well with, uh, with today's message here. Jesus' name by inheritance as a summary so that we go Jesus' name by or through conquest. He conquered to obtain his name. Say amen. Father, thank you for your word. It's anointed and we thank you that the ears of the hearers are ready not only to receive but to absorb your word in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. By inheritance, the name of Jesus. Ah, not by conquest, but you live there. I forgot to pass yeah, the message to you. I'm sure you have it there. But I want to read Hebrews 1, verse 1 to 16. Never mind if it's not on the screen. It's just a revision so that we, we cross over to today's message. Hebrews 1, verses uh, 1 to 6 reads, God, who at various times or in various ways spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets has in these last days spoken to us by his son whom he's appointed heir of all things through whom also he made the world say amen who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power when he had by himself purged our sins set down at the right hand of the majesty on high i'm verse four now before i read verse four i want to welcome brigadier brigadier has been away from us for five months please stand our brigadier mm. <laughs> the microphone so I meant to welcome him and I'm seeing him now here. Thank you. Briggs. Put you one of the five months. Hey, good to see you. 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 to see you. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> next time five months after a while. 
<laughs> Especially who wrote two lapad. Yeah. <laughs> but everything went well. So you saw your kids and your grandchildren. Yes. And hey, uh, yes. Well, Mina, let me speak for myself. Hey, 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 it's good to see you. I'm, I'm happy. Yeah, hey, you're, you're happy to be here. Right? Yes. Hey, good. I'm happy to be back home. Yeah, to be back home. Oh, we also vote. I didn't type in your Yeah. Okay, I need to go for We are such. We are not bishop. Come and sit here. Come and sit here. I don't know who will get you facing a blab. Blab where we will go. Come and sit right there. I'll sit here. Thank you. Yeah. So, what's being here? I mean, I'm not going to go interview on any. May I greet everybody? Yes. In Jesus' name. Know that I. I love you very much. Yes. Mm. Every night I would think about you. Would you pray for us? Were you praying for us? Yes, I was praying. Oh, good. Mm. I was praying for you. Mm. Yes. Thank you so much, yes. Brigitte. Um, yes. You know, here is my home. Yeah. I, yes. I, if anything happened once I was there, I was going to be very disappointed. Hey. See, I said to me, you pass them to the And then, if this message be a little kidney passport, eh? She says to me, this is an kidney passport. Or can you eat passport to attend the weekend? She says, I can get more bishop church. We are allowed. We are allowed. It's good to see you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I'm sure your wife is more happier than all of us here. I'm reading verse 4 of Hebrews chapter 6, of chapter 1, I'm sorry, verse 4. Listen to verse 4. Having become so much better than the angels, as he has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. Say than they. Verse 5. Two important things. Verse 4 is very important. Verse 5 is very important too. For to which of the angels did he ever say, You are my son? See, angels are not sons, you are sons. And he says, Today I have begotten you. Talking of Jesus. And again I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. Hallelujah. Verse 6 finally. But when he again brings the firstborn into the world, he says, firstborn. Who is the firstborn? Jesus. Jesus. When did he get his name? When he was begotten. He inherited a more excellent name than they. Mm -hmm. That's the matter really that we we're trying to deal with on Sunday. We say to you, Jesus Christ inherited a more excellent name. You will never find any other name more excellent than the name of Jesus Christ. I know you know the name of your spouse or your husband or your boyfriend. There is a name. Say there is a name. I say it again. Say there is a name. I say there is a name. Uh -huh. There is a name that is better, more excellent than any other name. So the question that we posed before you was this on Sunday. When did he inherit that name? We say to you, many of you believe that he got the name when he was born as a baby in Bethlehem. Wrong. Wrong, wrong, wrong. What's it like? Mm, he didn't get his name when he was born as a baby, isn't it? He did. Because God, in the book of Hebrews, said, A body has thou prepared me. In other words, he was in existence before he did in the flesh. So when coming into the flesh, he had to stay nine months in the womb of Mary. Okay, nine months. And therefore, when then he was born, he said, a body you have prepared. 
and therefore he lived in that body for 33 years. Say amen. amen. So when did he inherit that name? Hebrews 1 verses 4 and 5. Being made so much better than angels as he had by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. Verse 5. For unto which of the angels said he at any time, Thou art my son, this day I have begotten you. If you follow your Bible like I give you scripture and proof after proof, it is this, that when Christ hung on the cross, he not only died in the physical, he died in the spiritual Okay, because the physical alone could not redeem your spiritual. spiritual. So it needed for him to die as well in the spiritual. How? How do I say that? Because when he hung on the cross, he said, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why would God forsake his son? who was doing his will. Remember prior to the cross or facing the cross, he said, not my will, but your will. Why then when he was doing God's will, would God forsake his son hanging on the cross? Here's the reason why. He was carrying his own Ozako Lezan. And therefore God himself, who knew no sin, when he looked at his son, he loved so much, he saw the sins of the world because he's a holy God by principle, by instruction, he had to turn away from him. And therefore, we call that death. This is more serious death than the physical death. Remember we said to you, there are several types of deaths in the Bible. There is the death of the flesh. It is serious, but not as serious as the cessation of spiritual death itself. Spiritual death has permanence to it. Physical death is temporary whether you are a Christian or not a Christian because you will be given a new body unto hell or unto heaven. So that will say hell continuously. Continuously. So that, that eternity in hell is realized. You understand that? So Jesus Christ, therefore, after God turned his face away from him, according to Colossians, he went down to hell because he was carrying my sins. Down in hell. <laughs> it is there that he spoiled the principalities. Yeah, he brought them to naught. He paralyzed them and got access to the keys. Those keys had been thrown away by Ubabu Adam. Ubabu Adam, long back in the book of Genesis, when he saw his a lovely lady called Eve. Her ladies are powerful. Ladies, the only the only animal or creature or being that makes a man get confused is a woman. <laughs> a woman has the power to enhance your life or the power to destroy you or the power to make you do foolish things. Yes. Oh, yeah. See a man when he's trolling out with an 18-year-old, then you will see. <laughs> He's in love. <laughs> Ask that man next to you, have you ever been in love? We are Pambanuba. Upuma la metro, I say lighter, so I'm an as a boy to answer Zabufa when we say lighter. Mobi menya pelele eighteen years in Tatalapa, in Fagelap, in Suselapa, in Fagelapa. We have a song as such a lay. 
<laughs> so Adam gave away. He committed what we call in law high treason. He sold the whole human race. I say Adam, yet it's Eve that ate the fruit. But God did not come looking for Eve. God did not say, Eve, Eve, where are you? Because the authority had been given to the man. And the man saw this man say, put a tea. Ladies have a way of closing their eyes and opening them. Especially now we are in Chia Zamang. Voop, voop. Voop, voop. Voop, We are paisa upen. Choirs. <laughs> What THQ winners in the way zone the low mama way supporting SOM? But in GST is funny. Ah, that's a good one. Which is this is a good one. Take a call up. And then you can call up. You should go to row two and three and four. And then call me row number one. Indeed. And he does it on the cross of Calvary by going down. Dying in the flesh, uh, dying as well in the spirit, and redeeming that authority. And therefore, he paralyzed the enemy. That's when he was begotten. And that's when he is called the firstborn. <laughs> Jesus Christ is our firstborn. He is the first one to be born again. Oh, it sounds very tough for you to understand that, isn't it? Yeah. But it's all scripture. I will never get into a thing until I can back it up with scripture. Yeah, you understand that? And therefore, that's where the whole thing comes from. Hebrews 10 verse 5. Hebrews 10 verse 5 states, Therefore, when he came into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you have prepared for me. <laughs> That was that body. So he existed before, before Bethlehem. Say amen. Why do I say that? John 1, we say it. Verses in particular, verse 1 and 14. In the beginning was the word. Say it with me. In the beginning was? And the word was? And the word was? Watch verse 14. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his soul as of the only hope glory as only begotten of the father full of grace and truth can you see so he was there in the beginning so when he came in the flesh it is verse 14 and the word became flesh mm. yeah so that's the inheritance that we are talking about there, that he inherited his name. Hebrews 2, verse 9. But we see Jesus being made, or who was made, a little lower than angels for the suffering of death. Okay, he was made a little lower than angels so that he could suffer death. Again, the whole purpose of him suffering death was for our redemption. Uh -huh. crowned with glory and honor that he by the grace of God should test city. test death for every man every man yeah two types of death physical as well as the spiritual when we say someone is dead we are simple meaning that you can be dead while you are alive if you are separated from God uh -huh. It's just a matter of time before your spirit man as well uh, conforms to the death that is in existence, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So, 
ufile futhi ayinyamini uzaphila ukwafi but ufile mphefu but ungafa sufika bini so abantu abakhala ekumele bakhala umayi babo babe bambi mayi babo ngenyama mayi babo ngomoya say it with me say mabo mayi babo ngenyama nye mayi babo ngomoya listen to mark 15 verse 34 and at the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthan, which is translated, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When he had said, facing Gethsemane, not my will, but your will, and the Father was pleased. And then he ends on the cross, doing the mission of the Father. The Father says, oh no, <laughs> I'm forsaking you. No double standards there. It's just that they sin was carried by him so he carried us remember this song he paid a debt he did not owe i owed it i could not i needed someone that someone is the man christ Five, or Silo Matthew 27, verse 46. And about the ninth hour, Jesus Christ again emphasis with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, Lama Sabachthan, that is my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? You'll find that three major gospels are talking about that. Okay. Even the book of Psalms, Psalm 22, verse 1. My God, my God, the psalmist is prophesying about Jesus Christ. Even the Old Testament saints could see him far and see Christ. What a prophetic thing. When mm. one in Yamala, my term is a frigid. But some people can see into time. <laughs> into time. My God, my God, why have you sick? And David, or oh, the psalmist, lived way before Jesus Christ manifested in the natural, in the flesh. Not in the spirit, in the flesh. And from the words of my groaning. He was groaning at the cross of Calvary. And therefore, we gave you three types of spiritual deaths, rather. There they are. Spiritual death, that's more serious. That's your spirit separating from God. That type of death leads to eternal damnation. The second death is physical death. That one is not as serious as number one. Okay. If you are a Christian, you're just crossing over. Say cross over. Okay. And three... It is eternal death that's permanent. Okay. Or the second death, being cast into a lake of fire, which burneth with fire and brimstone. Okay. Because later on, while we are in hell, hell itself is going to be taken and thrown into that place. But if you see, occupants, all the occupants in hell, thrown in there. Can you see, therefore, that Christ? died in the natural as well as in, in the spiritual. And, and that's why you and I, Ephesians 2 verse 1. I'm just going through this so that I lay a foundation here. And you who were dead in trespasses, can you see? When you have sins in your life that are not forgiven, you are dead in your trespasses. Can you see the language there? Dead in your trespasses. That is before we were born again, the Bible says, healthy quickened. The word quickened means made alive. You can only be quickened by accepting Christ into your life and you get a new life. Say amen. amen. Ephesians 2 verse 5 says, Even we, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ by grace, by grace, by grace, say by grace, you have been saved. Let me consolidate that point again. First Timothy 5 verse 6, it reads, But she, say she, she who lives in pleasure is dead while she lives. Can you see? So that means you can be alive with Jesus, student going to but the power to feel. Mm. Already, now I'm saying this one. I'm at the morning earlier saying, yeah, this is a condition. This is a friar who says, you know, so. That's why you read the book in the book of Isaiah, the Bible. When you land in hell, the devil says, welcome to hell. He welcomes you. Mm. He says, you. You've landed up here as well. We thought you were a big person. Mm. Hey. Gwe sabega lok. Say, say, yebu gwe sabega shua. How? Wukati ngana lifunu gugu kulu. Genesis 3, verse 8, 11. Let's read that. 
Genesis 3, verse 8 and 11. Let's start with verse 3. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. They were never hiding. These guys used to enjoy life. God used to walk down and communicate with them in the cool of the evening and talk to them. But when the woman gave, take that is not an apple, the Bible doesn't tell us that fruit. I don't know what it is. Hmm. And gave it to the men. The men ate. The man was so in love, he ate. Can we talk to all men? While you have a wife, please remain sensible. Okay. <laughs> don't lose your mind. <laughs> and you can only practice that while she is your girlfriend. If you do that, don't do it. Remain balanced. Then the Lord God called to Adam and said to him, Where are you? <laughs> Not that God didn't know. He's just asking me what we call a rhetoric question, isn't he? He is the answer. So he said, I heard your voice in the garden, and I was afraid because, punyu punyu. I was what? Punyu punyu. I was naked, and I hid myself. So the moment that man, Adam, ate the fruit, authority was given to Lucifer, who had fallen already between Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. If you read there, there is a cap there. He fell there. He fell. He fell and came here on earth, and then he endeavored to get the authority, and he deceived Eve, and really the fault was Adam. So in marriage, like I've said before, whenever there is a crisis, it's not the woman. I don't care what crisis is. They say, oh, my mom's over. This is a good job, I say. The problem is who? I mean, I can't see like you're underway now. So if you're going to be counseling, don't worry about the woman so much. They are hardly wrong if they are treated well and if they are if they are managed well. I don't want to use the word money. If they are if they are um, they are not property, so they can if they are if, if they are in their place and they, they flourish. Mm. It is when you say, "Who will use Mama Lo?" Mama Lo feels with the covering lay in Sibalegit, and therefore she is left exposed, and therefore she is exposed, and everything else, elements of life, come in and attack her. So, but God addresses the man, Adam, where are you? <laughs> but why not Eve? Where are you? No, the key is with the man. So each time there is a problem in a marriage, I don't want to hear. It is your fault as a man. Amen. Hey, let's start from there. Amen. We just deal with you as a man. You have a big problem. Why is your wife behaving that way? You must have done something wrong. That's the principles of God. Yes. Address the man. Leave the wife alone. Mm. Mm. Once the man is aligned, the woman will be aligned. Yes. Hey. Even if your woman is crazy or your wife is so mad, it is you that is, that is not covering her in that craziness to remain central and, oh, and, and balanced. Move <laughs> There are no extreme cases. <laughs> there are no extreme cases. Move <laughs> Because the authority is given to you. That's why I started by saying, Ungabi love unto foolishness. Remain sober. Don't get intoxicated with free true love. Just remain balanced. Umtan do mamalo supply. For example, if the woman feels the man is not taking care of me and she is under peer pressure, she sees her counterparts doing this and that and that. And guess what? She may be tempted if she is weak. But if you find the root cause, it is the man. Same chi ilu mama loan. Oh, labo mama, awa bala ba chate labo mama. You have a wife, and you allow your wife to go and borrow money from a man. A man's interpretation is: if a woman says, "Can I have money?" The answer is yes, you can. What will I have in turn? That's they may not say that, but it's in their minds. <laughs> so when I saw me again, I'm people like, never send your wife to borrow money from a man. 
We are setting her up. Yeah. Mm, that vulture is looking at her. She, that vulture has been looking at her in church for a long time. <laughs> I think we are anointing. You are the man. You are the provider. Isn't it you are always saying I'm the man of the house? Man of the Man of the house. <laughs> I, I know I'm preaching well. I don't know why. I don't know I don't know why. I don't know why. I I I I I Right. Because somehow you are hair covering and all the shame is transferred to you. Mm, as a man. Is that not so? And all the men said, I now understand. Mm. Mm. <laughs> the problem is the man. I'm not interested. I even never like a new moon to win a root cause, Lapa. Hey, could you start leading? I was up. I begin to let you know. They're very, oh, Mamma, it's never a lasso. But let's go to the moon to my talent as his court is going to go. Praying, they would tell you that the mouth of the table soon was. They have my intercessors, they mentioned you, Miss Lap. You was already to hear my intercessors. <laughs> we pray a point, number one. <laughs> we pray a point. How was we in the corner? Hey, Bangatala, my intercessors, and tell you ten is a long gun, saying, just say, oh, well, everywhere, until you take your rightful position. Maybe I know, she has come to my lap as food tenders. I will never tell you, one year first. Hi, hi, hi. The name is in two as a share, are you? Nabo Mamma Guma intercession. As it is, I could inch up your case of Fugi. They will share on that. I'm allowing that to sink so that you all feel. Mini China, I expect to learn. So, like we are mentioning, so could I be Chechi? No, Cosina said, Lord, I think I'm intercessor. Same was in Jumpia, we have forgotten by. See, ever he calls for Cosin, your father, altar in the spiritual. Baba, see, attenders. Who would teach your belay, Pagan? <laughs> so he said, verse 10, I heard your voice, and he says, I hid because I was naked. And verse 11 says, Who told you that you were naked? So the glory had lifted. And then suddenly, that covering. Can you see the covering? Covering lift. A man is his covering from God, a woman is his covering from man. But all together, we all need God, including man and woman. Say amen. amen. Mm -hmm. All right, and therefore, that's the beginning of the fall of man. This whole thing, scripture talks about the fall of man, and man fell, and therefore he inherited again the nature of the devil, and that's where sin fell. But Jesus Christ, through conquest, also rather through inheritance, he comes in when he was begotten. All right, connect me to day seven. I'm going to, I have only six pages here by conquest, and then we can pray. Today we cover elections as well in prayer, but other things as well. Tomorrow is elections day. Okay, Zek and the government and the president all expect you to go and vote. But your vote is secret, is that not so? Who you vote for, it's none of you. It's none of our business. Mm -hmm. 
Pastors should always be neutral because here I pastor ZANUPF, I pastor MDC, I pastor CCC, I pastor which other party is contesting. There are many parties that are contesting. So you vote someone of your choice that hopefully you have read their manifesto and you looked at it and said there are better things than for you. And then you vote that way. All right, Ephesians 1, verses 20 to 21. Through conquest. He inherited his name. He got his name through conquest. He got his name by birth. But let's deal with conquest. Which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places. Verse 21. Verse 21 says, far above. Say far above. Our message really is zeroed on the second word, on the one, two, three, fourth word. Far above all what? Principalities and 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 every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. What a name. Colossians 2, 15. Colossians 2, 15. Having, mm, having disarmed. Mm, that having disarmed, it is when he went down underground, down in hell. He went and did warfare with Lucifer and his angelic or demonic host and paralyzed them. He didn't kill them. He paralyzed them so that you will just come in and reinforce that defeat. So you are fighting a paralyzed enemy. Look at your neighbor and say, you are fighting a paralyzed enemy. Mm. Having disarmed principalities and powers, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them. You can see the writer here who is the Apostle Paul, understood the Roman culture. The Roman culture is that if you went to a foreign land and defeated their armies, you will bring them back, those that were defeated, and parade them in the cities and in the streets, Romans in streets, uh, and parade them so that you are really paralyzing them, you are embarrassing them, you are disarming them, you are bringing them to naught, bringing them to nothing, shame as you paralyze them. And then the women and other weak men would have remained behind their clapping hands. Ah, hey, we have conquered that nation. And you are paraded. And this is the meaning of that. So they will be paraded. This is what Jesus did. So therefore he brought the enemy. Let's read. Having disarmed principalities, he made a what? Public spectacle of them. Uh -huh. Triumphing over them in it. Uh -huh. So Paul is praying a prayer here. Watch Paul's prayer. In Paul's prayer for the church, he stated that God had raised Christ from the dead. Mm. Not only the physical death, spiritual death. And set him at his right hand in the heavenly places. So, because Christ is seated at the right hand of God in the heavenly places, because you and I are in him, that's why you are able to say, I am seated in the heavenly places in Christ or with Christ, because he is on the inside of him. So, the moment you are born again, your status is changed. Mm -hmm. You have so much authority because you are seated. The reason why you don't know that you have authority over demons is that you don't know the name. <laughs> you may parrot that name, it won't work. That name comes from a relationship. First of all, being born again and a relationship. Say amen. If I know you very well or someone knows you very well, they will trust you with many things. Is that not so? If you are known by God, his son Christ, he will trust you with that authority. And therefore you can use that authority. Say amen. amen. Mm, Colossians 2, verse 15 again. 
and having listened to this version, spoiled the principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, openly, not privately, openly, triumphing over them in it. And another translation says, he put to naught, brought them to nothing. That's what that word means. He brought them to nothing, principalities and powers, making a show of them open, triumphing over them in it. And another translation says, he paralyzed them. Ah, that's the conquest that we're talking about. When we say Christ conquered death, we mean that he went underground. Keys had been with Lucifer for many years. From Adam to Jesus in 4,000 years. Diabolos was enjoying with the keys. Yeah. And then a mission was sent. Jesus Christ giving that mission to go and take that. From Jesus Christ to here now is 2,000. We're in the seventh, seventh year now, isn't it? 7,000 year, which is seven days. Mm. So 4,000 years. The keys had been taken by Lucifer, taken from Adam via a woman. Mm. <laughs> oh, woman, no cry. <laughs> a woman. <laughs> woman, no cry. <laughs> oh. Ephesians 6 12. Let's give you the principalities so that you get to know them. So that when you are praying and reading Ephesians, you understand what principalities are. Ephesians 6 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Can you see that? That's why he had to die a spiritual death because the warfare was not in the physical. It needed him to be fighting in the spirit. Yeah? But against what? Principalities. Against powers. Against the rulers of darkness of this world. Against spiritual wickedness in high places. They were never killed. They are there but paralyzed. And therefore for you to defeat them or to reinforce the defeat, you must be in Christ. If you are not in Christ, you can't. Never cast out demons when you are not born again. Yeah, they will say, Jesus, I know. They will say, Dr. Notando, I know. But who are you? Like the sons of Skiva. They will jump on you, tear you apart, open you up, beat you up, and then you run, puny, puny, like they did, isn't it? Yeah. What makes us cast out demons is Christ in us. They don't fear you alone. They don't fear your voice. They don't fear your suit. They don't fear your dress. They don't fear your wig that falls down now and again. They fear Christ inside of you. So when you say in the name of Jesus, if you say in the name of Jesus without him, it doesn't work. You say in the name of Jesus and it rages, this is mine. This child is mine. And therefore the power is released. Mm -hmm. So there are principalities there. Principalities. And therefore they must be dethroned in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. So no wonder he says in my name. So we must use that name because it was given again through conquest so we must use it and the devil understands the name more than any other name if you are one that depends on your bishop you say in the name of my bishop ah uh, it won't work it won't work every individual must know jesus personally so that when you use the name it will work for you say amen, amen. colossians 1 verse 13 number three point number three Colossians 1.13. It reads, Who had delivered us from the power or authority of darkness and had translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Translation means you are in one place, you are now moved into another place. And all the rights of this kingdom are yours. Say amen. And therefore you can cast out demons in the name of Jesus and they will obey you. And Colossians 2.15. Having disarmed principalities and powers, again that version says, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it, and there they were 
disarmed. Say amen. Amen. Here are points. A. That means the power of Satan is now weakened against that of a Christian. Mm -hmm. Wicked. B. It means Satan has no authority to dominate the Christian or the church. C. God has delivered us from the power of darkness. Touch your head with your right hand and say, I am delivered from the power of darkness. Yeah, 1 Corinthians 2, 6 reads. How be it we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, mature, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that come to, that came to, or come to naught. Okay, so the powers of darkness and principalities, according to Paul, apostle, they have come to naught. Say amen. amen. Listen, same verse, according to this translation, the Moffat translation. We do discuss wisdom with those who are mature. Only it is not the wisdom of this world, but of the, watch the verse, of the dethroned powers who rule this world. They are dethroned, yet they rule this world. Why? Because some of us are not born again. But to those that are born again, they still rule them. Uh -huh. To you who is born again, if you know your legal rights in Christ, they are dethroned and therefore they cannot torment you and dominate your life. Free. Say it again. Say, I'm free. Many people are afraid to cast out demons. Hey, oh, sissy, love your mama. Bye, Saba. Uh, but I'm here to tell you, you are free in the name of Jesus. Please stand. Hallelujah. Now, my prayer items today, or the other points, or one, one point will cover election. But let's start with my prayer points today. Did they give you the prayer points? Yes, yeah, prayer points. Heaven 6, scripture that we read. For we do not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers. So if you look at a human being and be angry with them, and not go beyond the flesh and demons tormenting them, you miss it. Christians have demons. Some of them on their head, shoulders, and their ears. That's why it has been a certain one. I want you to look at your neighbor and say, I don't understand why you are talking about it. I don't understand why you are talking about it. Talk to them in the middle and say, Es katinu la batala. Es katinu la batala ba utala. <laughs> Have you ever seen Christians behaving strange? It is the Christians that are carnal. The word carnal means flesh. They are ruled by the flesh because they are ruled by the flesh and therefore principalities dominate them. Yeah, because they have not known to exercise their authority. Ah, Four days, we have a steamer available. One month is on deep. So, man, legal, so many of us are better to that person. We have only in the lay of Matimon. We have never a short temper. And that's such a man, a short temper. On a bed, on a teacher bed, a woman. On a word and to the song, you have been used to the Ose church, you see this will long to Georgia. We are spring. No, mamma, we have to have a little go. You've not heard people like that. With anger, they tear their clothes. In anger. Once you see them, especially when we in Vegas, Vegas, we are not going to tell you. What is Mama? Mama, what is Mama? Mama! Hey, So, 
there are two types of Christians. Carnal Christians and spiritual Christians. Carnal Christians are led by the flesh. And therefore they are always dominated. And they allow demonic entities to rule their lives. Back on the church and you get confused and say, but Lord, I'm Zalwane. No, I'm Zalwane, but he created a kilo. Are you high grade or low grade? He created low. He created low leo yet to pay my church. I said, I don't know what I'm saying, I'm but I'm ruling him. God was woofing him. Because in Yama, Iron, if you see we pray item, in Yami Rome, in Yama, in our whole, in our whole. Hey, young gentlemen, we did today, we had to pray. Extend the pan, and there was in a Alifuga Banning Litan, and eh, here we are in Yamia Minister, as they would do, would Tini way. If you get a one way to Tini, Ungazula, five days we have one year, which you do Tini. Tini way. So if you're one that is never dealt with the flesh, Excellent, can I give you a excellent mouth? One can't do it, but one can keep it good. We can test the cardinal. Just tap out of bed and come on. A lot, that's the right way. And come on and pray. You must pray daily. Wake up and pray. And then say, have a stars. You know, prayers that we check and accept are those I'm not God. God accepts prayers anytime. But we put a ruling here to simply say, you check in before six. Uh, checking out, you can what don't just because we have free lunch. No food. No free as I don't know, one hour. It's nothing in one hour. Gain a two hours, gain a three hours, gain a four hours. Nearly pale in each other eight hours. Different levels of them. Miss book. I just prayed eight hours, I had this book come through. Mm. Eight hours. Mm. Eight, eight hours. I couldn't put references. I couldn't put God, God, God. I would reference. I'm not my references. Because you are coming to the point to mark knowledge. But Lela Lee, Lali. Just download from, from. But you can only get certain downloads when you pray. Without praying, that afterwards, <laughs> then you went. What type of an animal are you? <laughs> Your father is waiting for you to meet with him. Hey, I hope they are attended. Hey, don't come to Chimu and You are taking care of the flesh. Without the spirit man. Yes. You're mad. Yes. Mm. Something is wrong with you. Oh, yes. Woman, you are in danger. Yes. The first thing when a man is not praying is to fornicate. Yeah. 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 All of us here are susceptible to fornication. All men. Mm. <laughs> Once we come out of God, the first thing that we are looking at is a woman. Mm. That's a man. Okay. And a man can fornicate like a devil. He can, I'm telling you, he can fornicate with his seven, ten, fifteen women when he's out of order. Mm. Because as in this way, so he has to fight the desires. As in this way, he has to fight it. Occasionally, you don't go back, 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 back. Yeah, back, back. That's the drive, sexual drive that is in a normal man. A man has a high sexual drive. He was given to it by God. For procreation. Otherwise, I'm just going to have a bunch of Hey, yeah. But, who made a good cover on the inside? Hey, that says, who are going to be so good? So, who are going to be so good? Hey, 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 even this goes straight away. Hey. She's a good girl with the Alala, um, to know nicest dog in a very good job. Already, you have your. Is it easy to walk in the spirit? It's not. But you must train yourself to walk in the spirit until it becomes easy. Oh, I want to jump to Uncle Uncle Mosoto, Mamma Mugge, Jut Mosley, Utunekona. Eh, what's not? Mamma Zula, where's Superman? 
dangerous. Let's go back. For we do not rest against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, or age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness. Where are they? In the heavenly places. Yeah. Let me tell you now, according to Apostle Paul, the third heaven is the domain of God. God resides in the third heaven. The second heaven, according to Ephesians 2 verse 2, is the domain of these principalities. Uh -huh. That's the second heaven. The third heaven, being the earth, is the domain of you and I. That's our area. And therefore, all spirits that come from the third heaven, being angels, and the second heaven, being demonic entities, when they come here, they must find a body, or else they are illegal to be here. They can't operate. It's illegal for a spirit to be roving or roving over. And no, it can't. It is to find a weak Christian and enter in there. Ah, remember the story of the gatherings? When Jesus Christ cast out the demons, the demons say, Ah! Singa pumalapa, emuntuin, ukatarindo, siyagubad. They ask for pigs. Because it's a body. Mm -hmm. However, why do they prefer men? Men can express themselves in a wider range. A man can kiss, think, swear, all that can be polluted by the demon. And that's why demons love mankind. When I say men, I mean men and women. And therefore, I met his I met his ukulumu. In David's year was, that's why they prefer men. Or else they go into animals. If they can't find animals, who is this status? Young gain is started. If this status, they want to But I will express it. Yeah. We are so right. So three heavens there. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, <laughs> nor angels, no principality, no powers, no things present, no things to come, watch verse 39, no height, no depth, no any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Say amen. amen. Oh, say amen. Amen. Mm. Now, if you study the word principality, I am leading prayer, I know. You will discover that it comes from the Greek word ark, A-R-C-H-E. That's where you get the word architect, isn't it? Yeah. It comes from that word, the ark. It means first. It means chief. It means master. So when we're talking of principalities, we're talking of chefs and masters. Yeah. And principalities, they love to dominate. I want to give you that thought so that you'll understand when we are praying. So certain, therefore, evil principalities are intelligent architects, builders, and engineers of evil. <laughs> they engineer evil. Some of you have degrees in engineering, but your degree can't surpass that of this man here. Degrees of en evil engineering. They design to say, you are so and so. I think we can attack you this way, differently from her. Mm. And that's why when demons come in and principalities, they come to a man, they know that the, one of the doors that could be easy to open is a woman. Because they understand the makeup of a man. And therefore, a woman can cause a man to fall. Not that the woman is evil. Even a good woman who has not done anything, it is the man himself who looks and begins to imagine, can cause it. So, one of the greatest weaknesses of any man is towards the opposite sex. 
true or not true, man? True. Mm. I see. <laughs> not what when we sling, when we examine it. The problem is go go. The problem is go baba. It's man. That's how he was made and created. And therefore, if a man can conquer that aspect, then he's done. He's fine. You will find that all other things, weaknesses, they're there, but he can conquer them. If we can master as men, I'm saying as men, if we can master the desire of a woman, a man has conquered. This has nothing to do with whether you are married or not married. No, it has nothing to do with that. Don't look at a married man and say, ah, yeah, no, I do not know. Moba is going to Canaan land. He knows Canaan land. Mm. <laughs> mm. Okay, yeah. But the Bible says, therefore, the gates of hell, Matthew, the gates of hell shall not prevail. In Matthew 16, verse 18, let's read that scripture. And I also say to you that you are Peter. And on this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of heads shall not prevail against it. Say amen. amen. So you understand that. But here is another verse I want to give you. Isaiah 45, verse 3. So that when we are praying, you will understand all this. I will give you the treasures of that. Can you see this? So when the enemy comes in to steal and plunder, he is not authorized to destroy that which is taken from you. He can store, store is a wrong word. He can tuck it somewhere and keep it. So there are treasures of darkness that are kept. The things that are meant to be yours and yours and yours and yours are tucked in some way until you get violent in the spirit, understand the principles and go and take what is yours. Let's read that scripture now. I will give you the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places. These are the things that are meant for you. Mm. There are many things that you are not enjoying now. They are in the storeroom. But that storeroom is not your storeroom. It's Lucifer's storeroom. The way to open it is the name. <laughs> and take that which is yours. If you read the book of Daniel, if I had time, I was going to show you. Daniel starts praying. He prays a prayer of 21 days, 21 days. But when he is now recounting, he says, the angel, from the first day you prayed, I heard you. When he knelt down to pray, God heard him. But what happened? The answer was dispatched. And then it was taken to this place here, treasures of darkness, for 21 days. But he kept on kneeling and praying. Until even the angel, smaller angel that had been sent with that answer, came left that heaven. This is how prayer works. You are praying, your prayer storms that heaven. Answer is given, but the angel has to pass second heaven. Ephesians 2, verse 2, is the domain of the devil. He meets these guys, boom, they take. And then, oh, they withheld him. Then he had to go back and carry Michael, bring Michael. Michael comes. Michael has authority, greater he passes through, boom. 21 days later, the answer comes to Daniel. So when you are praying, don't think God doesn't hear you. He hears you. Mm. But there are certain things in this, in, this, in this storehouse that are held. Let's read. I will give you the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places that you may know that I, the Lord, who call you by your name, I'm the God of Israel. Yeah. Now, there are principles to get in there. And one of the key principles is prayer. Yeah. Uh, and prayer that understands that you and your authority above principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, wicked spirits in the high places that you have authority. And then you take what is yours. Some of you prayed many prayers. Your, your, your goods are there. They left heaven long back. Uh, yeah. Some of you ladies that are single, your dude is there. <laughs> Look at me. I'm as well. I get my cool one in Babay. Your dude is in the second heaven. Your dude is in this. He's held up. So, second heaven is real. Just as third heaven is real. 
Just as the earth is great. Say amen. Okay, so when you understand that, then you can pray with violence. Give me Daniel 10, verse 12. I'll just, then he said to me, do not fear, Daniel, for from the first day that you set your heart to understand, to pray, and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard. If his words are heard, it's prayer, isn't it? And I have come because of your words. 21 days. If you go back, it says, the prince of Persia, a principality, withheld me, you say it another way, withstood me. I was coming, Prince of Persia. I had to go and get Michael. There are three archangels. Michael is the archangel of warfare. He can't be denied. Gabriel, bearer of good news. There was a third one, Lucifer, who entered into musicians. Who <laughs> are not born again. <laughs> and all others. He was the angel of music. <laughs> he stood only musicians. He entered everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Say amen. amen. Now, I want us to pray seven things here we are claiming. We are bombarding Isaiah 45, verse 3 there, and taking that which is ours. Okay. Sometimes in this type of prayer, you are not asking, you are demanding. You are using the name of Jesus. Give me what is mine. I want you to look at your neighbor and, and practice with some authority over them. I assume they're an entity. They're not an entity. But I assume they're an entity. Say, say these words. Say, look at them. Look at them. Give me what is mine. Ah, oh, you're not smiling. What's the guy? What's the guy? But I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Assume. 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 Say it again with more aggression and anger. Give me what is mine. But that person is not a devil, but I'm just teaching you to be, to be angry. Some of you are too nice. So, so nice. Mm. Yeah. Have you ever seen mothers when they are contending for their children? Mothers. <laughs> mothers. Doesn't care. If you want to kill me, kill me. I'm getting my child. But I can always find someone else and make But do mama understand? That's why most prayerful people are women than men. Yeah. Women understand this principle. They understand the principles of aggression. When someone is taking that which is yours, robbing you, you come and contend for it. Say amen. Yeah. yeah. Say I contend. What I contend. Say Lucifer. Let's, let's pretend he's under our feet now. I, I don't know where he is. Maybe he's inside of you, but let's pretend. <laughs> let's, let's pretend. Let's pretend. <laughs> For the purpose of this exercise, he's under your feet. Amen. Mm. Say, Lucifer, Lucifer I, reinforced I reinforced your defeat. You were paralyzed when Jesus Christ went underground and brought you to naught. I therefore reinforce that defeat. Yeah, that's the aggression when you are praying a prayer. There are many types of prayer. But this is a prayer of warfare. I it. How we in men? If if we are cheap men, we are kokama rogue. You tap them in. You are ready to fight. You want to bite his ears, bite his eyes, bite his lips, bite his nose, bite. You are fighting rough. Mm. Do you know how to fight rough? Me, I used to fight rough when I grew up. I know how to fight rough. Yeah. I jumped over a big man and I poured sand in his eyes and his mouth and I opened him and threw sand in. That's what you call fighting rough. Because you know you don't want that guy to come again. You want when you have beaten that guy by chance, he fears you every time he sees you, he says, yeah. The guy was some 10 years older than me. And he was far taller than me. He was taller than Brigadier. <clears throat> what happened is I knew this guy I wanted to fight him. So I jumped over him and he fell. I knew that if he rolled me over, I'm finished. I'm finished. 
So I sat on him. <laughs> Even though I didn't know to pray, say, Lord, give me strength to fight this guy. Mm, I don't think God heard that prayer, but I prayed nonetheless. So there was sent while I was holding, putting sand in his eyes, in his ears, in his mouth, everywhere, putting sand inside of him. No, that's fighting love. Yeah, if you are fighting for your life, you learn to fight rough. Yeah. Hey, but some of you are too sophisticated. Yeah. Lord, if you had to answer me, just answer me. If you don't know how, you don't know. You get nothing with that type of prayer. You remain cute, but I'm a demonic with his palate. I want you to look at your neighbor and say, Jenga, I can't even say, you see, you're too cute. Mm, too cute. I'm a bit more in this prayer. I'm not saying be dirty, I'm just saying on the inside. Be rough on the inside. Because you are contending for that which is yours. Yeah. Say, I'm fighting, I'm fighting for that which is mine. For that which is mine. And therefore, you see, I wrote there, let's demand and claim that which is ours. And I wrote, what are these stolen goods? What are these stolen goods? Number one, our health. Our health. Because when your body is weakened, it's difficult to pray. It's difficult to pray. Now the child can't go up. We go and see, man. Ten of our preachers, we have learned the art. See, so we ma, we are going to cool. Let's go and have a smile and preach ourselves happy and lay hands and prophesy. We broke. We passed them. We are with Chumai. We are going to go to the buses. We are going to send it. We are going to be busy. 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 Because you don't walk by sight. What you have, you walk by what the Bible says. Down the line, as you preach like that, God meets your need. I pray for many people. Say, I break through MC. I receive my money. I say, I am happy. Good and good. But I have none to do my job and rejoice with you. Uh -huh. Are you understanding? Yes, sir. Uh -huh. Our health. So if you're well in body, assume there is some things in your organs that you don't know about that may be growing. Pray for those organs. Yeah, name them one by one. The organ. There are many organs in your body. I don't want to mention them. Some are public, some are private. But mention those organs. And that if ever there is anything. If you think you're well having done that, Find someone that you know and pray for them that they get healed. Because healing is ours. Amen. When he went underground, he put out healing. And therefore, who himself bore sins in his own body on the tree that we, having died to sins, might live for righteousness by whose stripes, notice the term there, you will be healed. You were healed. Let's start with that today. There are seven of them. Pray rough. Mm. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before you reminding you of your word. Your word states that you brought principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, wicked spirits to naught. You paralyzed them so that our healing may be received by us. And therefore, we understand in Isaiah 45, verse 3, that they are our goods that have been stolen by the enemy. We go and visit that chest and demand and plunder and receive our healing. We are healed from all forms of diseases, from back aches to head aches to migraine headaches, to liver problems, to heart problems problems, to knee problems, to back problems, any other diseases in our organs that we may know not of. We confront you, Lucifer, and your cohorts. We plunder and take our healing. We plunder your chest and receive our healing. You have no part in our lives. We receive it and we receive it now because the name of Jesus that came by inheritance, by conquest, is ours to use. And we use that name that causes you to fear. Healing is ours. 
We are made whole completely. Every organ, every tissue, every fiber, every sinew, every bone in our body is healed, completely healed in the name of Jesus. We speak healing now from the top of our head to the soles of our feet. We remember our loved ones who are not well. We command every sickness. We command every disease, every infirmity that is tormented them to live now in the name of Jesus. We're praying for harvesters. Those that are here, those that are in other houses, we command sickness and disease to leave them, to leave their children, to leave their loved ones. We speak healing now by your stripes. They were healed. They are made whole in the name of Jesus. We speak it in Jesus' mighty name. We plunder the treasures of darkness and hidden riches in secret places. And therefore they are ours. Healing is ours today in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We bless your name. In Jesus' name, say amen. This type of prayer of warfare, there are many types of prayers. There's praise and worship. You don't need to be violent. But this type of prayer, you need to be violent. Not that you are standing on scripture. You understand that your stuff is hidden somewhere in the second heaven where there is the treasures of darkness. You must storm the gates of hell and receive that which is yours. For yourself, for your children, for your loved ones, I prayed for the church. Say amen. Number one, one. say amen. amen. Number two, our finances, resources. Isaiah 45, verse 3. Because Isaiah is more appropriate here. He says, I will give you the treasures of darkness and hidden riches. Riches are hidden. When I find a to sell him money, can't you? Nen the long alive. He made a quick catch. You are in between money. Now we are in between money. There is money here. There is money here. But here in Ghana, when you are in between money, is very difficult. Yeah. You are usually in between money. Yeah, we feel a So you must now storm that chest and receive. That which is yours. Say amen. Mobile number for you, Matt. Lamanya resources. Eh, long kid, eh, full. No, my food in Talunjal was a big school exam for any interest. So you must get your finances. You prayed for them for many times. They left first bed heaven. They held up second heaven. Eh, Imari, you don't get any food now. You couldn't pass. Oh, my toll again, who was a tight aunt? Mm. sanctified, keep it ten percent. It's only hold. We the first keep it ten percent. We are too far gone. Pass one time. Um, Zuguru, I can't believe so tired. I can't give you. I far gone. Um, can't flash a chip. We are supposed to gain a part of the chip. All right. Can we pray for resources? Father, we understand that there are treasures of darkness in secret places and riches that are ours. Dear God, we are standing today in the name of Jesus, the name that is above every name. It is that wonderful name that we are using today to claim to receive to take that which is ours. We thank you that resource is ours. We thank you that money is ours and all other resources. We refuse that the enemy tax in that which is ours. May our money come to us. May the resources of your children come back to them. In the name of Jesus, we declare today that those resources are theirs. 
We speak it. We release them in the name of Jesus. Lucifer and your cohorts. Lucifer and demonic entities, principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, wicked spirits in the heavenly places. We are now storming that chest. Resources are coming. Treasures of darkness are ours. And all hidden riches of secret blessings. May we know that we serve a living God. We take them by force. You have said in your way, from the time of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence. And it is the violent that sees it by force. Those are ours. We receive them in the name of Jesus. We receive our millions of dollars. We receive our resources, all other resources, in the name of Jesus. We have need for them to enhance the kingdom. We have need for them to build the houses of God, houses of worship. We have need for them to bless your children. Dear God, we claim these, we appropriate these in the name of Jesus. They are released in Jesus. They are released in the name of Jesus. We bless your name. We thank you. We honor you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Put your hands together for point number two. Hey, it's high time you take it. Amen. Let me deviate a little bit to point number three. Go to Matthew 11, verse 12, so that Baba and Abba Yabama Mazi would tell Matthew 11, 12. Mm. You must be aggressive when you are praying the prayer of warfare. Oh, yes. Yeah. Matthew 11, verse 12. I see a Matthew 11. Matthew 11, can I recite it for you? From the time of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of God suffered violence. And the violent seize it by force. Seize it. So in this type of prayer, not all types of prayer, in this type of prayer warfare, you need to be violent in the spirit. In the spirit, man. Anger and holy anger must be your portion. Uh -huh. Holy anger. Says he caught till I get him for it. Says as I told him when when I look at number three souls. Did you know that some of your relatives are held up? Their salvation is held up because somehow you prayed and you stopped. Mm -hmm. And you are easy to criticize them. Labana batagwa. Labana awuwas butwe numtanda zogu ufaga. That anointing, that conviction, that grace was released for them. Mm. So you and I can think of somebody. You are violently claiming them into the kingdom. Yes. They must be born again. Amen. They must be born again. If it's not you that will bring salvation, somebody else who must come in and talk to them. Amen. And conviction must hit them. Amen. I know when you're talking to them right now, I'll be in a church. Just by saying, be serious about your life. I've talked to many people that bow down instantly. And they say, follow me in prayer. Don't mess around. Suddenly they're weeping. But a person was in change. When you come in in that zone, they are ready to accept Christ. And they bow down and they're crying. Salvation comes in. They are delivered. But you shall receive power. So you have that power. So have the power. When the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be what? There is that power. It is for you to be a witness. To me where? And then, and then, Samaria, and then. You can interpret that in many ways. Your Jerusalem is your immediate family. Your Judea is your extended family. Your Samaria is Lebanon, Abbas, Yogakur. Samaritans and the Jews were not very good friends mm. and the utmost can we pray at least target three people that you want to be born again three and the duty onus is on you after this prayer find them and talk to them mm. right let's pray three names 
Father, here we are. Today we are thinking of our loved ones. Our loved ones are far away from you. Dear God, we understand that they can be taken captive and they are. Sin has taken them captive. Dear God, name by name, we think of them and we claim their spirits and their souls from the clutches of the devil. Lucifer, you cannot hold them. You cannot hold them. We cannot hold them. They are released now in the name of Jesus. They are released now. The convicting power of the Holy Spirit is flowing through them, hovering over them, convicting them of sin in the name of Jesus. Power of sin, you are broken over their minds, over their souls, over their spirit. Now. They are delivered in the name of Jesus. The children of our members, I pray that all of them be born again. The spouses of men and women in this church, may they be born again, but they are not born again. In the name of Jesus. May salvation reach down to uncles and cousins. In Jesus' name. May your grace be extended to them. May salvation reach down to them. In Jesus' mighty name. Salvation is theirs today. In Jesus' mighty name. They will not go to an eternity without you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And thank you for your grace. And thank you for your love. In Jesus' Jesus, mighty name. That's our prayer today. Yeah. Guess what? You have sent the word. You need to complete it by talking to somebody. You will see that they will be able to listen. Number four, peace during and after elections. Tomorrow is election. Ever since I remember elections in Zimbabwe, it's violence before, it's violence during, it's violence after. Okay. Even when results are coming out, there is violence. There are disputes. We are tired of this. Say amen. Yes, we are tired of this. It doesn't help anybody. Progress and vibrancy of our economy. You don't need to be a prophet to understand that our economy needs help. Seriously. Seriously. And therefore, our country needs that. But you and I can pray. Listen to 2 Chronicles 7, verse 14. If my people, who are what? Called by my name, shall humble themselves, pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then hear from heaven and will give them and heal their land. That's a prayer. We are basing our prayer again. So many of us are, are angry in the sense that our country can be better than what it is today. Is that not so? Yeah. We are not blaming anybody. We're simply blaming ultimately the devil. Let's pray and make sure that our country gets it. Father, here we are. We are bringing Zimbabwe before you. This great nation. This nation that is falling apart in the natural. We are asking for your mercy. We are asking for your grace. We are asking for your intervention. Come through for us. Heal our nation. Heal our land. Restore, Lord, our land. In the name of Jesus. Heal our economy. In Jesus' name. May your grace be extended. May your mercy be extended over this nation. You say in your word, if my people, and here we are as your people, we believe we are called by your name, and we are humbling ourselves from you. We are turning away from our many wicked ways. Lord, hear us, forgive us, and heal our land. Our land needs healing in the name of Jesus. Our land needs the manifestation of your grace. Manifest your grace in this land, in this nation. Lord, we come against demons of violence. 
We refuse that violence take place in our nation. Lord, post elections, when the results come out, we are praying for peace. Peace that surpasses human understanding. That's what we are praying for. Show your mercy, Lord, during elections, after elections. Show your peace, Lord, in the name of Jesus. This is our cry. This is our prayer. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your grace, for your will over this nation. Heal Zimbabwe. Heal every facet of our nation. In Jesus' name. Our industries, our hospitals, our economy, transport sectors, a Ministry of Health, and transport sectors, industries that produce, the captains of industries. We are praying, Lord, for your grace over the nation of Zimbabwe. We subdue demons of violence. We subdue them today. We subdue blood-test men and women. We subdue those in the name of Jesus. Entities and demons that will seek to take life. We subdue those in Jesus' mighty name. We declare peace in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen and amen. Put your hands together. Number five. We are at warfare today. Mega churches. Acts 17 verse 6. Psalm 47 verse 3. But when they did not find them, they dragged Jason and some brethren to the rulers of the city, crying out, watch this now, these who have turned the world upside down have come here too. May you be the one that will turn the world upside down so that churches will grow in the name of Jesus. Listen to Psalm 47 verse 3. He will subdue the peoples and us and the nations under our feet. Mega churches. I want you to look at your neighbor now and say, you are going to be a pastor of a mega church. I don't wait for them. Say, I said, you are going to be a pastor of a mega church. A big church. Massive church. Hmm. Say, I don't care whether you're a businessman, whether you're a professional, you are going to be a pastor of a mega church. Now, I want to ask to pray for mega churches first and foremost at Harvest House, then in the body of Christ. To be known, Zimbabwe, to be known for massive churches. Shall we pray? Father, we are demanding today that our churches will grow and increase and expand. We speak mega churches. We know, Lord, that as we go out to win souls, you will give us extra grace to win multitudes unto you. In the name of Jesus. That is our prayer. That is our cry. Mega, mega churches is what we pray for. In the name of Jesus. We're praying, dear God, that there will be tremendous growth in Jesus' name. That men and women will lead churches that run into thousands and thousands as you open the heavens in the name of Jesus Christ. There are many men and women that we've won in the streets that have gone back. We are claiming each one of them. May they come back from the clutches of the enemy in the name of Jesus. May the powers and rulers of darkness that have held them for years, may they find themselves released in the name of Jesus. Grace upon grace in the name of Jesus. Say amen. Put your hands together for that. Number six. Look at your name and say, anointing nani. He kona ebo pati nani. Nani ga kuru. Nani. So we are praying for increased anointing. Uh, listen to what the psalmist says. But my own you have exalted like a wild ox or a unicorn. I have been anointed with fresh oil. 
I want you to place both your hands over your head and pray for increased anointing over your life. The anointing lays Can it be increased? Bless your hands. Let's pray. Father, we are releasing anointings, diverse anointings upon our lives in the name of Jesus. Increase anointings and different levels of the anointing. Anointings that reach to international level. Anointing that will be head of international. Anointing that will be head of national. Anointing that will be head of in this city. Anointing that will be head in a local assembly. Anointing of the house. Release these different types of the anointing. May they operate so mighty in our lives. In the name of Jesus, we release such graces. We release such anointings over our lives. In the name of Jesus, may we swim under these anointings, diverse types of the anointings. May the devil tremble at the anointings that rest of our lives. In the name of Jesus Christ, may we walk under these anointings. May we sleep under these anointings. Every time, in every instance, may these types of anointings operate mightily in our lives. In the name of Jesus, great grace, great anointing in Jesus' mighty name. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Say amen. amen. Lift your hands up and say, I receive. Diverse anointings, personal anointing, anointing of the house, anointing of the city, anointing of the nation, international anointing. May these be my portion in the name of Jesus Christ. May my anointings know no boundaries in Jesus' name. May they hear of me and the grace that is upon me and seek to be around me in the name of Jesus. International anointing. Receive it now in Jesus' name. Amen. Get a passport. Get a passport. Get a passport. Hey. Revival in our nation, number seven. Hey, that's the last one. Psalm 85, verse six. That's my scripture. It's based on my book here. Oh, it's a basis for my, my book. Will you not revive us again? Yeah, Psalm 85, six. Let's read that scripture. What does it say? Will you revive us again that your people may rejoice? Can you pray for revival? Revival means the heavens are open and God comes down. Let's pray. Father, here we are. We are praying for a mighty revival, a mighty visitation in our nation. Open the windows of heaven and dear God, come down. Isaiah 64, verse 1 and 5. Come down, Lord, and dear God, shake the mountains. Bring about a mighty visitation, a great grace. In the name of Jesus, let it be so. Rain on the nation of Zimbabwe. Rain in our nation. Spiritual rain. Rain in our churches in a mighty way. Rain in a supernatural way. Revive us, Lord. Move us from lukewarmness. Change our lives. In the name of Jesus. It is your grace that we pray manifestation of your grace manifestation of your love in the name of Jesus we thank you Lord Jesus oh we bless your name revive the nation revive us revive families revive homes that's our prayer today in the name that is above every name the name of Jesus Put your hands together for Jesus. I am carrying envelopes here, offering, come and get an envelope from me for an offering or for a giving. You are cementing your prayer today. Yes, I am carrying an envelope here. Come and get it.